when I think of data privacy in K-12 schools, you know, being at managed methods, the laws that come to mind for me mainly are you know, FERPA, uh, Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, uh, COPA, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, and then uh, CIPA, the Children's Internet Protection Act. And I know there's others out there, but we just say these are the three main uh, regulations that districts mainly focus on in terms of remaining compliant with? Yeah, it's 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 the holy trinity, honestly. It's, you know, if you, you got to tick those three boxes if you want to be online or, at, you know, any sort of connectivity at a K-12 school. But like, you know, uh, FERPA, you know, protects the privacy of student educational records. So it doesn't address what applications, though. It, it gives us a nice framework and ideas of how they can be compliant with it. So that's that's just the Department of Education law. COPA is a Federal Trade Commission ruling, I believe. It's a law requiring guidelines for children under 13. The idea is, you know, uh, COPA requires websites to post complete privacy policies, um, notify parents. That's why we have stuff like YouTube Kids uh, versus YouTube directly. Um, that's why I have to jump through a lot of hoops when we went through Google Classroom, because how can a second grader agree to, you know, hop on a classroom meeting? So we had to make sure that we had the parents sign off on that and understand. And then the last one would be SEPA. It's the uh, FCC federal law. And as I understand it, that law is tied to what's known as E-rate. Um, the idea is I can get a discount or my district can get a discount on technology based upon our free and reduced and uh, rural versus urban status and a bunch of other metrics. But the basic idea is we have to make sure that we're filtering our internet content as it comes into the district so that we can receive benefits based off of uh, our free and reduced population.